Hi, this is Julian and welcome for a new free tutorial. This time it's going to be on dark table. So uh, I'm using it under Linux here. It's the version 2.2.5 and I'm going to show you how to create black and white and with three different methods. So this is the light table. I have just two photos for you. Uh, don't forget you can go to my website to uh, get the uh, raw files I'm using right now. So the link is in the description uh, down below. So first I'm going to double click on the cat and this one is going to be the first one we're going to modify. Well first uh, just one um, something to notice. It's a very warm image. It's been taken at sunset so it's really yellowish. We can have a look at the histogram confirming the white balance is not really uh, neutral, which is not a problem because we're going to convert to black and white anyway. You can uh, adjust the white balance beforehand if you want, but that's not mandatory. So we've got three different ways uh, to create black and white. And the first will be to use the monochrome module. So let me first uh, activate monochrome. So as you can see, it's been converted, it's been desaturated. We now have a grayscale picture. Now, if we uh, click and drag the cursor over a different color, you will see that the, uh, the result is slightly different. So what it does, uh, basically it's going to filter the black and white based on the color, meaning some colors will be more uh, will be brighter than others. So if you click and drag the cursor over a tone that is the, uh, the most common tone in the picture, so, such as orange, then you will get obviously a different result than blue because we have no blue in this picture so we've got like a dull image it's uh, really not as contrasty as it should be now the contrast is a lot better if i uh, put the cursor over a tone that is well represented within the picture so it is very automatic it's very easy but it's not the most uh, powerful tool in the world if you use photoshop and lightroom probably you want to have all the colors being split mm -hmm. and you want to adjust all these colors separately to say for example I want the range to be bright, I want the blues to be dark uh, and um, etc. So this is one way to do it, just monochrome and then uh, drag and drop basically. So we have a different way to create black and white, we can use channel mixer and this refers to, um, to the method we had like back in the days, I would say like 20 years ago or something uh, way before Photoshop had a black and white adjustment layer or way before Lightroom and Camera had the black and white conversion. So what we've been doing for years before that, uh, well basically we use the channel mixer. So channel mixer will um, tell how the primary colors uh, behave. So for example, if we choose the red channel, we say we have 100% red, but we have no green and no blue, which is uh, absolutely logical. And actually it's something that we used for print, so it should be CMYK, but obviously on a RAW file it's uh, red, green, blue, because the primary colors are red, green, blue. So for red, we have one for red and zero for the others, and obviously, as you can expect, green, same, one for green, but zero for red and blue. So all the primary colors are at 100%, while the others are not, which is, again, very logical. Now, if we switch to gray, what we can do uh, is split the red, the green, and the blue differently. So let me go back to um, the uh, preset menu. And as you can see here, we have different presets. If I, if I choose color artifacts boost, uh, obviously it's not gray anymore because what we've done is use a preset that spread the sliders across the primary colors differently. Okay, we have the same for hue, saturation, and lightness. So when you activate the channel mixer, just go to black and white, then go to gray and the destination and then you can adjust each primary color separately to create a different contrast. It's slightly better because now we can create a black and white based on three different variables but it's not uh, the best uh, we can have. Uh, if you want to achieve exactly the same result as what you can expect from Photoshop or Lightroom for example where each color is being converted to a gray value and then it's uh, brighter or darker then we have to use color zone and for that example I will use the other file I will use this one because in this one is well we have blue we have yellow we have red it's just a bit more there's a bit more um, material we can work with so if I activate the color zone and 
have this module. So by default, it should look like this, like a flat line. It's in saturation mode. And what it does, it saturates a color on the color wheel. And just to uh, illustrate what it does, let me use the, uh, the color picker. And here I can say, give me on the color wheel this color. So this here, this is a point, but I can use like a zone, an area uh, to have an average. So now I have a black line showing me this is where this average is on the color wheel. Now, because I'm in saturation, if I desaturate this, well, my blues will finish gray, right? So all the colors are saturated except the blues. So as you can guess, what we should do is desaturate everything and then go back to lightness so we can adjust the lightness for each colors that are now gray separately. Well, actually we have a preset for that. You can right click and select black and white film. So now in saturation, it's all flat. And in lightness, we can use the different uh, points we have. You can create a new point by clicking on the line here, if you want. And then I created more points. And even more than that, if I double click, I can just get the flat line as well. So now all the colors are equal once they are gray, which means I basically desaturated the image. If you were in Photoshop, there would be a control shift U, for example. So now I can say, well, I have the blues here and I want them uh, to be darker, right? But I want my yellows and oranges to be actually brighter. And this is exactly what it's doing on the picture. So now I can sculpt my black and white the way I want. So we can do the opposite. We can say we want all the uh, oranges, the yellow to be really dark, but actually we want the blues to be really bright. And we have a very different result. So this is a lot more precise. This is the best way probably to create a black and white. This is what all the other packages have to create black and white, like Capture One. Um, they've got this method uh, on one, obviously Photoshop, Camera, and um, of course Lightroom. So it's not called black and white, it's color zones, but you can achieve proper black and white editing by just uh, desaturating every color and then adjusting the lightness separately. This is the best way, I think, to do it. So here we go. That was uh, my tutorial on how to create a uh, black and white with three different methods. I hope uh, you enjoyed it and you found it useful. If you want to download all the, um, the two raw files, uh, you can go on my website, gmpost.com, or you can find all my other premium tutorials on Photoshop, uh, Affinity, and Lightroom. And there will be upcoming workshop, uh, premium workshop on Darktable as well. Uh, if you're on YouTube, obviously, youtube.com forward slash Julien Ponce TV. This is my official channel where you can find a playlist for Photoshop, one for Lightroom, one for Affinity Photo, and now I have one for Darktable. Uh, if uh, you want to have a specific topic being covered in this channel, uh, you can obviously drop me a line and I will do my best to produce a video based on what you need. Thank you very much for watching and I see you in the next one. <laughs>